Alright, lesson 2.4, multiplying and dividing radical expressions. I'd say that this uh, section is probably the apex of the unit so far as uh, difficulty goes. So please uh, stick with me. Um, it will get a little bit more daunting as we proceed. The first examples are, are okay. You might be able to do those on your own and fast forward to see if you got the right answers. But let's get going. Uh, products of binomial expressions involving radicals may be expanded using the distributive property. I think you know the distributive property, sometimes referred to as feeding the chickens, and the multiplication property. Of radicals. And the multiplication property of radicals states that if you have some radical a to um, the power of n, or sorry, to the root of n, uh, times some radical b to the uh, root of n, that's equal to the uh, root of a b like so. Okay, example one here. Let's take a look at that. So, basically all we're going to do here is we're just going to uh, expand and simplify as we normally would in a, a distributive property type question. So, this is what um, you may have heard in the past. FOIL, you can do first, outside, inside, last when multiplying. So, the first term is multiplied together. 4 times 3 gives you 12, root 4. And yes, that can be simplified, but I'll just leave it like that for now. If you want to write that as 24 right off the bat, that's fine. Uh, 4 root 2 times negative 5 gives you negative 4 root 10 plus 6 root 10 minus 2 root 25. And now we can simplify. This gives me 24. Uh, I'll simplify those first or those middle two terms. That gives me plus 2 root 10 minus 2 root 25. That gives me a negative 10. Gathering my like terms, I have 14 plus 2 root 10. So we've done ones like that um, kind of before, so you should be okay with that, uh, just understanding our FOIL. Now, this is a unique one right here, um, and I'll, I'll make note of this on the side for you guys. Uh, recall. Difference of squares. So we dealt with this in grade 10. Difference of squares says that when you have... Um, binomial a, b times by the same binomial only with a negative in it, you can say that the answer is a squared minus b squared. You're going to notice that that's actually going to happen right here. You, I'm going to do it the long way, but you could have actually saved yourself some time here. So for instance, 4 root 2 times 4 root 2 gives you 16 root 4 minus 8 root 6 plus 8 root 6 minus 4 root 9. Now simplifying, this becomes 32. These cancel minus root 9 is 3, so that's minus 12, that gives you 20. Now the other way you could have done this right here is you could have just taken this first term and squared it. So that term squared would be 16 root 4 or 32. And the other term, that term squared, subtracted, would be uh, root 3 squared is just 3 times uh, 4 is 12 and you would have got 20. I would actually accept you going in that direction if you wanted, as long as you can show me or prove to me uh, how that works. Okay. Um, let's move on. When radicals have variables in the radicand, so it's underneath the radical sign, as with sums and differences, it is important to identify the value of the variable for which the expression is undefined. Basically means when it doesn't work. Any restriction on the variable should be determined from the original expression and not from its simplified form. So what I mean is I don't want you going through and doing a question, getting the final answer, and then checking the final answer for restrictions. Always check for restrictions right away with your initial question. All right? So we'll try that here with example two. Example two says identify the values of the variables for which each expression is defined and expand and simplify. So if we take a look here, what do we know about square root signs? Well we know that whatever's inside of them must be positive. So we know that b must be greater than or equal to 0. That's as simple as it gets. Okay, that's all you need to do for your uh, restriction. And now we can use the distributive property. 7 times 3 is 21 minus 35 root b plus 6 root b minus 10. Uh, I'll just write that as 10b. And now simplifying, notice that you can gather the middle two terms. We'd have 21 
minus 29 root b minus 10b as your final answer, that being your restriction. Let's try the next one, uh, kicking it up a notch as you can see. Um, to start this one, what I'm going to go do is I'm going to foil out these first two terms. I'm just going to write this term um, twice. Actually, maybe I'll do that right away. I'm just going to write that like so. as root x plus 5 root y. Okay, so you're going to have to use the distributive property twice here. So the first one here, um, you could use the short method that I talked about because notice that that is a difference of squares. These two over here would not be a difference of squares because they're both plus signs. I'm going to do it the long way though. 3 root x times 3 root x gives you 9x. 3 root x minus, sorry, 3 root x times root y gives you uh, minus 3 root xy plus 3 root xy. So you'll notice that those will cancel. Uh, minus y. Now coming over here, it's going to be a subtraction sign. And then notice how I'm going to put brackets because that's going to apply to everything here. Root x times x is x uh, plus. 5 root xy plus 5 root xy plus 25y. Okay, I'm going to distribute out that negative into all those terms. That's a common mistake. I can't tell you how many students are going to miss that right there. Um, those terms are gone. So this will be negative x minus 10 root xy. I've just combined those two together. Uh, minus 25y. I'm going to look for any more like terms. The 9x minus the x, I can make that an 8x. The negative y and the 25y, that'll be a negative 26y, like so. Recall that when a fraction is multiplied by 1, its value does not change. This strategy can be applied to a quotient with a radical in the denominator. So for instance, let's say we start out with something like so, uh, 1 over root 3. Okay. What we can do is if I was to multiply that by 1, of course it doesn't change. Well, if I multiply this by whatever's in the denominator or root 3 over root 3, root 3 over root 3 is actually just multiplying it by 1. All right. So if we do this, we'll take a look at what happens. 1 times root 3 is root 3, but then when you square a radical, it just gets rid of it. So this would be your solution like so. Okay. This process is called rationalizing the denominator. Okay, and they go on to say, it is done mostly as a math convention, but does have some practical reasons. So when you are rationalizing the denominator, what you're going to always key in on is what radical do I have only in the denominator? Whatever radical you have in the denominator, I want you to multiply by that. It's very important that you uh, you understand that. I want to rewind that again. Um, very, very important concept. All right, example three. So we're going to practice this process of rationalizing the denominator. Notice here, I'm not going to pay attention to what's in the numerator, just the denominator. Denominator, I know there's a root seven, so I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by root seven. Okay, so this essentially is like a distributive property right here. You can feed here and here. You're going to get five root 49 plus 3 root 7 all over root 49. Of course, you could have simplified those root 49s right away. That's fine by me. That gives you a 35 plus 3 root 7 all over 7. All right. Now, what I want you to always do at this stage is check to see if you can simplify anything. And the numbers that you want to key in on are 35, 3, and the 7. Since there's no numbers that go into 3, 35, and 7, you're good to go. That is your final answer. Let's try B here. Now B is a little bit more uh, more work, all right, and I'll get I'll show you why. I'll start out with a little note here. Um, always try to simplify the denominator before rationalizing. It can make things a lot easier for you. And actually, I would say simplify. You can even simplify the numerator if you, if you wish. Uh, always simplifying before you start multiplying is a, a good idea. So here, I'm going to write this as 6 root 2 minus 4 root 3. And I'm going to notice that uh, root 18 you can write as the square root of 9 times 2. And this will give you 6 root 2 minus 4 root 3 all over 3 root 2. 
And you might say, well, great, that's supposed to be simplifying. It might look like more work. Well, it will pay off. At this stage now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to rationalize my denominator. Now, I'm going to multiply it now by root 2 over root 2. Now, remember, I'm just multiplying it by the radical here. I could have really multiplied it by 3 root 2, but you would have to simplify after. So I'm just going to buy myself some real estate and pop it up here. And let's simplify this. 6 root 2 times root 2, that's going to just give me 12 uh, minus 4 root 6 all over. Remember, root 2 times root 2 is just 2, so 3 times 2 gives you 6. Now, a lot of people are going to give me that as their final answer. If you gave me that as a final answer on, let's say, a test or something like that, you would lose marks. Notice that 1, 2, 3, all of those can be simplified. Since they can be simplified, I expect you to do so. They're all divisible by 2, so the final answer would be 6 minus 2 root 6 all over 3. Another thing to note is notice how the radicals never change. That just stayed the same, like so. Okay. Um, now, when the denominator of a quotient of uh, radicals is a binomial, what I want you guys to use is use a difference of squares in order to help us rationalize. So this question, as you can see, is a little bit more difficult because we have two radicals in the denominator. So here's what we're going to do. We would take what is exactly in the denominator, root 3 and a root 5, and we're always going to do the opposite sign that we have. Since we have a subtraction right there, I'm going to make this one a pause. If it was the other way around, I'd do the opposite. So essentially here, I'm just multiplying by 1, because if I was to take all that and divide it, that would just be 1. Okay. Now we'll distribute. Root 2 times root 3 is root 6 plus root 10. Now, if you want, you can FOIL all this out to see what you're going to get. Or you can just take the first term and square it. So root 3 squared is just going to be 3. You can take the last term and square it, which is just going to be 5. You're just going to have 3 minus 5. I might encourage you, if you want, to try FOILing those out, and you will see that that will be what you get as a simplified answer. Lastly, we'll simplify this. You would get root 6 plus root 10 all over negative 2. Uh, I would probably accept that as a right answer, although you're going to see that normally we don't like to have, just like we don't like to have radicals in the denominator, we don't like to have negatives in the denominator. So I would move that up, and I'd write my final answer normally like this. Okay, so I'd, kinda, I'd rather see this one, um, but I'd probably give you full marks for either. All right. Let's try a couple of these. I think i got two examples uh, on the back page here, and then we are good to go. So. Uh, this is uh, one where you have uh, a radical uh, in the denominator. Whenever you have two terms like this, we're going to use the difference of squares technique. So we're going to multiply by exactly what you see in the denominator, only switch up the sign. Oops. Okay, so even now that I've gotten that far, I've gotten you guys going, this might be a good time for you guys to uh, pause it, run through it, and then check the final answer to see how you did. So 4 times 3 gives you 12 root 2. 4 times 4 is uh, 16. Notice here that I haven't put brackets, but it does imply with that dot in the middle that you do need to be um, using your FOIL property here. Okay, the inside terms will give you 6 root 12. Notice that that root 12 will need to be simplified at some stage, plus 8 root 6. In the denominator, since this is a difference of squares, again, what you can do is you can just square the first term. So 3 squared is 9, root 2 squared is 2. So 2 times 9 is 18. It's always going to be subtract. 4 squared is 16. So simplifying my numerator, um, what can I do here? I have 12 root 2 plus 16 plus 6 root 4 times 3 plus 8 root 6 all over 2. 12 root 2 plus 16 plus, notice that I can um, take the square root of 4 that gives me a 12 root 3 plus 8 root 6, like so, all divided by 2. This one's kind of unique. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. All terms in the numerator can be divided by 2, so I do expect you to go ahead and simplify that. 6 root 2, plus 8, plus 6 root 3, plus 4 root 6 is your final answer. Last one. This one on for size, we're going to multiply this one by exactly what's in the denominator. Only change the signs up. Okay, going ahead in the numerator, I have 2 times 3 is 6 root 6, minus 4 root 
minus 4 root 9 minus 12